In January 2021, the Taliban was in the strongest military position it had been in since 9-11, and we had the smallest number of U.S. forces in Afghanistan since 2001. Despite the profound effects of the Doha Agreement, President Biden ultimately opted to implement the previous administration's decision to withdraw American troops and honor his pledge to end our nation's longest war. To the extent President Biden faced a choice, it was between ending the war or escalating it. Had he not followed through on his predecessor's commitment, attacks on our forces and allies would have resumed, and the Taliban's assault on the country's major cities would have commenced. That would have required sending tens of thousands more U.S. forces back into Afghanistan to defend ourselves and prevent a Taliban takeover, with at best the prospect of restoring a stalemate and remaining stuck in Afghanistan under fire indefinitely. President Biden inherited a deadline, but no plan to meet it. At his direction, beginning in the spring of 2021, the administration and the State Department in particular engaged in extensive planning for a whole range of outcomes. We pursued a sustained campaign to urge any Americans in Afghanistan to leave. We restarted and dramatically increased resources to what had been a moribund special immigrant visa program to bring Afghans who had worked by our side over 20 years to the United States. Even the U.S. government's most pessimistic assessments did not anticipate that the Afghan government and security forces would collapse so rapidly in the face of Taliban advances. Nevertheless, because of the administration's extensive interagency planning coordination, when Kabul fell on August 15th, the United States was able to evacuate our embassy and relocate our diplomats to the airport within 48 hours, and then conduct the largest airlift in U.S. history, helping approximately 120,000 Americans, Afghans, and citizens of allied nations depart Afghanistan in just two weeks.